Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section we're going to continue our review of functions. We're going to, in particular, look at how to simplify expressions for functions. And this is in anticipation of what we're going to need when we get to limits. So when we get to limits of functions, we're going to need to be able to work with the expression for a function, manipulate it, and simplify it in certain ways. So all that we're doing here is anticipation of that. Now this lecture is one of three review lectures that we're going to do which are just in time. So here we're doing simplification just in time before we need it for limits. There'll be two other lectures in that nature. And the material for these lectures, we've added a little bit more material to some notes which we call a companion guide to calculus and those are available on our course website. So you can, if you're watching this lecture and you need a few more examples or you want to see a bit more description, then you can get it from those course notes. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this first example. We want to give the domain in a simplified expression for this function here, and then we're going to sketch its graph. So what's the domain of this function? Well, the domain is going to be the set of all x values that makes sense to plug into the function. Well, it doesn't make sense to plug 2 in because the denominator is going to vanish at 2. So we need to exclude 2 from our domain. But it seems that every other value of x makes sense. We plug it in and we can work out the top and the bottom. And the bottom's non-zero, so we can always do that division. No problem. So there's our domain. What's a simplified expression for f? Well, what do we mean by simplified? Well, in the context of this lecture, we're going to get a little bit more details about what we mean by simplified, but the idea here is we want to get some cancellations happening. We want to cancel something off from top and bottom. So in order to do that, we notice that we can factor the top. It factors as an x plus 2 and an x minus 2. And so there's this common factor of an x minus 2 on top and bottom. So I can cancel that off and get that f of x is equal to x plus 2. Now there's a problem here in what I've written. The problem is, is if we were just to look at this last statement here, f of x equals x plus 2, and we were to apply the general rule of thumb that says when you're looking at the expression of a function, you assume that the domain is as large as possible all the values of x that make sense to plug into it. We look at this and we see, well, what happened to the problem at 2? Two? 2 wasn't in the domain, but now it looks like it is. We can't change the domain of the function without actually changing the function itself. So this is our function f. We got rid of the apparent problem at 2, but we need to still indicate to the person reading this that it's not in the domain. So for x, not equal to 2. So remember, our functions consist of a domain, a codomain, and a rule. The rule looks like it's changed, but in fact it hasn't. We've just found a different expression for the rule, but we also have to make sure we keep the domain information along with it because the domain information that was inherent by the description of the function above here as this ratio, that domain information seemed to get lost when we did the simplification. So we still have to make sure it's explicitly stated there. Okay, so there is our function. Let's go ahead and sketch the graph. So our function looks like it's just the line, x plus 2, with slope 1, except that when x is 2, we have a hole. Right there. So there is the graph of our function f of x. Okay, so we've written down the domain, we found a simplified expression, and we sketched the graph. So we did everything that was required. Notice that it wasn't until we got our simplified expression that it became apparent what the graph really was. It really is the graph of what looks to be a line with 
one hole removed or one point removed from it. So what about this next question here? Consider the function g of x equals x plus 2. Does f of x equal g of x? Are the functions f and g the same? Well, this question is really trying to hammer down that point of a function consists of domain, codomain, and a rule. So if any of those three things are different, then the functions are different. So if the two functions have different domains, well, they're different functions. If the two functions have different rules, obviously they're different functions. But here we've got that g is given by the rule x plus 2. What is the domain of g? Well, the domain of g is assumed to be as big as possible. All the values of x would make sense to plug into it. So the domain of g in this case would be r. But the domain of f is the set of all x and r such that x is not equal to 2. These are different. f and g have different domains, so they are different functions. So f of x does not equal g of x. They are different functions. However, and don't let this confuse you, they have the same rule. f and g have the same rule. Whatever x that it makes sense to plug into both f and the g, the corresponding outputs of either of those functions will be the same. They'll be x plus 2. But the functions themselves are different because I'm allowed to plug 2 into g, but I'm not allowed to plug 2 into f. So the domains are different, so the functions are different. All right, let's go ahead and look at this next result. So this next result's about the factor theorem. Now, the idea with the last example is we needed to factor. We had a rational function, we wanted to simplify it, we needed to cancel some factors top and bottom, so I needed to factor that polynomial on the top. So there's a handy way to know what a factor is of a polynomial, and it's given by the factor theorem. And it says that if you've got a polynomial p, and a real number r, then if r is a root of p, then x minus r is a factor of p. And the opposite is true. If x minus r is a factor of p, then r is a root of p. So to summarize this, p of r is 0 if and only if x minus r divides p of x. So we read this vertical bar as divides. So this is handy if we want to factor a polynomial and we don't know, we can't eyeball what the factors are. Instead, it says, well, look for some roots. If you can find some roots of the polynomial, some places where it vanishes, then you can pull off some factors that way. So let's look at this next example. We want to factor this cubic. Well, I look at the coefficients and I say, oh, that's negative 3, negative 13, 1, and 15. Oh, I see immediately that if I plug 1 into this, I get 0 as a result. that's equal to 0. By the factor theorem above, it says then that x minus 1 divides the polynomial. So what that means is that this polynomial, this degree 3 polynomial, can be written as x minus 1 times some quadratic. How do we find the quadratic? Well, we can use long division, polynomial long division, to find this. We know x minus 1 is a factor, so we know if we divide x minus 1 into this degree 3 polynomial, what's going to be left is a cofactor, which is a quadratic. So we can use long division to find that. So here we go. x minus 1, I'm going to divide it into x cubed minus 3x squared minus 13x plus 15. So x goes into x cubed, x squared times. So I multiply x squared to x minus 1. And that's the result. Now I take their difference. And that becomes negative 2x squared minus 13x plus 15. And then x goes into negative 2x squared, negative 2x times, 
So that becomes negative 2x squared plus 2x. And take their difference again. So that's negative 15x plus 15. And then negative 15 times x gives me negative 15x plus 15. And they cancel to give me a remainder of 0. I expected a remainder of 0 because I already knew from the factor theorem that x minus 1 divided into the polynomial. So now what does this tell me? Well, long division tells me that this quantity up top that I just found multiplied by this quantity here added to the remainder is equal to what's in here. And so all of that then tells me that if I continue down this equality here, so I'll continue down this equality, that's equal to x minus 1 times x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay. So I know x minus 1 is a factor. I used long division to figure out what it was. And now I'm essentially done because I've reduced the problem of factoring the cubic to now factoring this quadratic. I peeled off one factor. I'm left with a quadratic. That quadratic, I can factor, either eyeball it or use the quadratic formula to find the roots, if there are any. I can factor it as x minus 5, x plus 3. And so there we go. So that was an illustration of how we can use the factor theorem to factor a polynomial. Now let's go back to the simplification problem. So here we're given a rational function. We want to find the domain any common factors between the top and the bottom, and write it in a simplified form. So what's our domain? Well, in order to find the domain, we need to exclude the things where the denominator vanishes. So that's what we'll go ahead and do, is we'll figure out where the denominator vanishes. We can do that by factoring it. It's a quadratic. We could probably eyeball them. In this case, we can x plus 4, x minus 3. If you can eyeball them, you can use the quadratic formula to find the roots and then therefore factor it. Once you've got the domain, it's a set of all x in R where I will not allow negative 4 or 3 because those make the denominator vanish. Now I want to find some common factors in the top and bottom so that I can write the function in a simplified form. Now, in order for there to be common factors, either x plus 4 or x minus 3, or both, will be a factor of the top. The factor theorem allows me to check rather quickly which, if any of these, is a common factor with the top. And to do that, what we do is we check if x plus 4 divides the numerator by checking, which is quicker, if negative 4 is a root of the numerator. So let's plug negative 4 into the numerator. Negative 4 cubed plus 5 times negative 4 squared plus 5 times negative 4 plus 4. Okay, rather than multiply all these things out and add them up, I'm just going to do this in a little bit smarter way. I'm going to factor out a negative 4 from every term. So that leaves me with a negative 4 squared, 16. This one leaves me with a 5 times a negative 4, which is negative 20. This one leaves me with a 5. And this one leaves me with a negative 1. So this is 21 minus 21, or 0. So x plus 4 is a factor of the numerator. So it's a factor of the numerator. So what that means is if I take x plus 4, and I divide it into the numerator, x cubed plus 5x squared plus 5x plus 4, I'll get down to a remainder of 0, and I'll know what the cofactor is. It'll be sitting up top. So let's do that. x squared goes in. That gives me x cubed plus a 4x squared. So that's an x squared plus 5x plus 4. And then... How many times does x go into x squared? It goes in x times, multiplying them out, x squared plus 4x. 
that gives me an x plus 4. And looks like I did everything fine because I get a remainder of 0. And so now we've got from this what our cofactor is in our numerator. So we know that f of x is equal to the numerator is x plus 4 times this cofactor we just computed, which is x squared plus x plus 1. And our denominator is x plus 4 times x minus 3. Now we can cancel that common factor. And I get an x squared plus x plus 1 all over an x minus 3. And remember that when I do this cancellation, I have to include a statement that says, even though it looks like now I can plug four, negative 4 into my function, I can't because it wasn't in the domain. So for x not equal to negative 4. There's our simplified form. Well, OK, I'm not quite certain at this point. I didn't check that x minus 3 wasn't a factor as well. But we can certainly eyeball that at this stage. We can say, well, if x minus 3 was a factor at the top, then 3 would have to be a root of the top. So I plug 3 in, 3 squared plus 3 plus 1, that's not 0. So 3 is not a root of the top, so x minus 3 isn't a factor of the top. So x minus 3 won't divide into it, and so this is our simplified form.